good morning participants welcome to this course on knitting myself uh, bipin kumar i am assistant professor in textile technology department at iit delhi before i start introducing this course let me introduce my team to you for making this course there was hard effort by so many members in my team including manjeet singh who is the technical superintendent at iit delhi in knitting section we have a soak also who helped in making samples and uh, providing some literatures i also have huge support from my students phd students tuhin and priyanka we have a very strong support from nptel team who helps in video editing animations shooting um i'm also highly obliged for uh, company persons from uh, different uh, sections of the country including bala subramanyam ramandeep pavan sharma who helped us giving me so many technologies related to knitting and i also i am i would like to acknowledge some of my students who helps in making fabric samples as well as making some photos and videos so let's go to this course in this particular lecture we are going to cover some basic topics on knitting first of all we would like to know what do you mean by knitting to understand the knitting we need to also understand the structure of the knitting so we will discuss about some of the unique features and applications of knit structures at the end we are going to compare knit versus woven structures which is the most fundamental things because once you understand these structures you would be able to appreciate the knitting which is so important nowadays to design any sort of products not only garments but also technical products related to different applications so let's go and see what do you mean by knitting knitting is nothing but just it's a process of converting yarn to fabric so when we talk about yarn to fabric conversion we have basic four processes in textile where we convert fiber to yarn yarn to fabric and fabric to garment knitting basically relates of conversion of yarn to fabrics so when you talk about conversion of yarn to fabric we have different means by which a single individual yarn can be converted to different types of fabric structure and knit is one of that structure so you have a yarn which you make from the fibers fiber to yarn this yarn later with the help of different fabric making technologies you convert into different fabric structure and some of them are woven knitted and braided we also have one fabric technologies which is quite popular in 21st centuries which is called non woven so non woven is also very important nowadays because it just skip the yarn formation so you take the fiber and directly you convert to the fabric so you take the fiber and directly converting the to the fabric so this is why this is not actually called as a fabric we call it non woven because we do not include yarn as a process of fabric formation rather we just take the fiber and convert into the fabric so these are the four fundamentals of fabric structures which is used in textile engineering and knit is one of that structures so in this entire course we are going to discuss about this particular structure its technologies its properties and its applications let's let's go and see what do you actually mean by knitting most of us we are quite used to of using t-shirts in daily routines so if you carefully see this t-shirt by microscope you will realize that yarns in this fabric structures moves in the form of loops so knitting is nothing but a production of series of loops which are connected together 
So, knitting is just a process of fabric formation by producing series of intermeshed loops. What do you mean by intermeshed loops? Let us see one of the loop carefully. So, you have this loop. So, in reality, if you take any yarn, it is generally in straight form. But in the loop, you can see the movement of yarn is in the bent form. So, to keep the yarn in the bent form, it need a support and that support is provided by other loops. So, if you see this particular loop, which is shown here, it is supported at the bottom and at the top. So, you can see the upper loop and the bottom loop, they are actually supporting this loop in that particular shape. So, this is called intermeshing. So, here you have the loop which is intermeshed with neighboring loops, especially at the top and bottom in the same column. So, knitting is just a process of intermeshing different loops together and these loops only help each other in securing and stabilizing the entire structure. Okay? Knitting is very popular if you might have seen in many households women used to do hand knitting. This is very quite common. So, they take just the yarn, they convert in the loop and these loops are interconnected together. It is a process of interlooping of the yarns and you make very beautiful structure out of that. Again, let us try to see this structure carefully. You have a knit structure which is shown here. If you take out the microscope and try to see the loops inside the fabric, it will look like this. Most of the garment, knitted garments will look like this. The very interesting part is, if you just take out these loops, this is already in the bent form. But if you try to stretch it, you can easily open these loops because it, this is not the normal configuration of the yarn because yarn is in the bent form. Obviously, yarn will try to move it in the straight form. So, if you try to apply any load on knitted structure, the loops will just open up very easily. So, one of the very unique feature of knitted garments is it is very, very stretchable. The second most interesting feature of knitting is it is very, very flexible as well. So, you can see it can fix with the body contour very easily compared to uh, if you see woven shirt, you have to give your proper shape and size, you have to cut the garment properly and then it can fit in the fit to your body by proper tailoring. But in case of knitted fabrics, most of the times it can fit very easily and conform to your body properly because it is very, very flexible. So, this is one of the very unique feature especially in knitted garments. The other thing you will feel like while when you use any t-shirts compared to shirts, it looks very, very soft and the softness actually comes from the flexibility and stretchability. Also, the type of yarn which we use in making these structures are comparatively soft yarns or you can say it low twisted yarn, which in general gives the soft feeling for these type of fabrics. That is why we prefer in daily routine to use t-shirts as a casual wearing. The other beautiful things about knitting is it resists wrinkles. Compared to a shirt, you need to iron it properly before you use it. But in case of t-shirts, it can resist wrinkles, so it needs very limited amount of ironing. If you see this knitted structure carefully, it is very, very open. These loops uh, are comparatively open. So, that is why it allows you very good amount of moisture and air exchange. So, that is why if you see most of the sports garments, they are actually made up of a knitted structure because it is very open and you feel more comfortable bit because it allows you good transmission of air and moisture. More porosity, this is one of the most 
fundamental unique features of a knitted structures. Knit structure is highly, highly porous. Porosity is nothing but the free space which is available in the structure per unit volume. So, if you have let us suppose x amount of volume, how much percentage of x is available as a free space. So, if you see many sweaters or woolen garments, they are made up of knitted structures. And the main reason that it is made up of knitted structure is it is very, very porous. And the beauty of porosity is because it can entrap air. And once it entraps air, air as having very high thermal resistance. So, that is why it does not allow heat to exchange properly. This is why knitted is very popular in woolen garments because it can entrap air which do not allow heat to pass through. The other thing is like the knitted is also gives you unique possibility to create any design on the surface of the fabric. So, you can see here in the photo itself the main body looks different, but if you see the collar it looks completely different. It also both of these bodies are parts of the garment contains loops only, but the designs are completely different. So, there are unlimited design possibilities are there in case of a knit structure. So, we have seen why this knitting structure is so popular because it gives you some additional benefits which most of textile structure cannot provide. Because of these, knitted has been used in many, many applications. We are going to list a few applications which you might have seen in daily routine. First one is hoisery. If you see most of your socks underlinings, they are all made up of knitted structures. Sweaters, all woolens, most of the woolens are made up of knit structures. T-shirts, they are also made up of knit structures. Apart from garmenting, knitting is also very useful in decoration. So, in home furnishing, you can see these are knitted structures which is used for decoration or covering a contour surface. Why is it so? Because as we have seen, knitting is very conformable, very drapeable. It can fit to any shape very easily. So, that is why it is used as a home furnishing to cover any shape and size. It is also very popular as a underwear because it gives you very good stretchability which is required underneath our body. Apart from garments, you might have seen a lot of structures in daily routine where again knitting has been used. One of the uh, important things from Indian perspective is uh, mosquito net which is very, very popular to prevent malaria. These structures, you can see it is very, very open yet sufficiently closed so that mosquito cannot enter. So, this is your made up of a net platform. Agro nets which is also quite popular in agricultures where you use knit structures to cover the plantations to prevent or give little bit amount of sunlight depending on what type of crop uh, is being used or generated on the field. So, uh, knitted has been used for covering as well. It allows air and moisture to pass out, but also it can protect little bit of sunlight to prevent damage or excessive intensity of sunlight to certain crops. So, agronets is also very, very useful. You might have seen in the supermarkets, they used knit structures for as a packaging material. So, you can collect uh, these, uh, these structures are not stretchable, but still it is so coherent that you can keep many materials in these structures. So, these are the common things which are very frequently used in real life. Apart from these applications, some advanced applications which is nowadays happening around the world is e-textiles. So, e-textiles is like one of the areas where you actually integrate sensors or actuators and make the garment responsive. These garments can be used for health monitoring which is the top priority in 21st centuries. Everyone wants to know the health benefits or they want to track their health. So, in that case you can fit the sensors inside the knitted structures and these structures will still be conformable and 
flexible, it can fit to your body, it can give you the signal, sensors can be appropriately located to certain segments of the garments. So that is why knitted is so useful for very highly advanced applications. In sports also knits gives you a lot of flexibility because it is open porous, it is more comfortable, breathable, it is stretchable which is the prime requirement for most of the sports. So that is why knitted garments are quite popular in sports as well. Uh, nowadays in last 3 to 4 years we have seen a huge shift in shoe market where shoe is replacing foam and they are using knitted as a shoe uppers. So most of you might have seen most of the top brand shoes they are making knitted shoe uppers because it is very porous, conformable, breathable and durable as well and these are replacing foams. Knitted is also being used in composite applications, in cut resistance fabrics. So this knit structure is not only just limited to garment like undergarments or underlining but also when you design these properties or design these structures you can achieve very significant properties for different applications. Cut resistance is one of those areas where you can use this fabric for as a cut resistance garment because knitted is so flexible that when you try to cut these structures the loops will try to consolidate at one point and it will not allow easy tearing of such fabric. So that is why knitted uh, is used in such some technical applications as well because of its structural features. So before we end this lecture, let us finally try to understand how fundamentally a knit and woven is different. You might have seen woven fabric in daily routines, most of the shirts which we wear are made up of woven structures and most of the t-shirts are made up of knit structures. So I have few samples to show to you how these two structures are completely different. If you see a woven structures, I am going to show you these structures in a while, just try to understand how these two structures are completely different. So in a woven structures, it is actually made up of two sets of yarn, you can see the green yarn which is the warp yarns and the yellow yarns which is the weft yarns. So these warp and weft yarns are actually moved in a certain fashions. For example, if you see this yellow yarn which is the weft yarn, it is moving one up and one down. So the, in the first point the green one is on the top but on the second green one it is at the bottom. Then again the yellow one is on the top and then green one is on the top. So the structure looks like one up, one down. But the most interesting point which you can notice is the movement of these yarns. So the movement of each individual yarn in this fabric structure is just like zigzag. If you try to pull out these structures from one of the ends with sufficient force, you can just take out these yarn very easily from these structures. Also if you try to straight these fabrics, maximum this crimps or this curliness will just become straight. So you can see even if you give force to this type of fabric, the extensibility is not that significant. So maximum up to 20 to 30 percent so you can extend these type of woven structures. So in reality whenever you encounter a woven structures, it is first of all it is very very limited stretch compared to knit. It is extremely rigid, because of rigidness it cannot fit to any three dimensional shape or structures. It is extremely extremely tight, so it has very poor transmission compared to a knit structure. While knitted as we have seen, it is made up of loops which is very easy to deform. So when you try to give any force, it will try to extend very easily because the loops will try to open up. Because of that it is more stretchable, more flexible, it can conform to 3D structure very easily, it is very very open, that is why it gives you very good transmission properties. So these two structures are fundamentally different 
uh, in many properties. Let us have a look physically both of these structures and try to see how they are different in many aspects. So, I have listed a few of these things like appearance, thickness, extensibility, tear strength, permeability and drape. So, we will try to understand how these two structures gives you different uh, performance in terms of all of these properties. So, I am going to show you these two samples, one is woven and one is knitted. So, first let us try to see a woven structure. This is your a woven structure, if you try to zoom it, you can easily find there are two sets of threads. So, you can easily see let me show you two sets of threads which is moving. So, you can see this vertical threads and you can also see the horizontal threads. So, basically it is the intermessing of two sets of perpendicular threads. And if you try to stretch these fabrics, if you try to stretch these fabrics, you can see it is not stretchable. I am giving, I am applying very high force to these structures, but it is not stretchable. Okay. If you try to flip this fabric, if you try to flip this fabric, it again looks almost similar. You cannot differentiate which is top surface, which is bottom surface. So, in terms of appearance, they are completely same from both the sides. Okay. Also, one thing you can easily do is you can take out the yarn from the ends. So, I am trying to pull the yarn. So, you can see these, these yarns can be easily pulled. So, you can take out the yarn from either sides, from all the sides you can take out the yarn. Now, let us try to look at a normal knitted structure. So, this is the basic knitted structures. Some of my students, they help making these samples. Let us see this structure. So, uh, you can easily see it is made up of some fundamental units which I have already shown the loops. You can see it is the vertical columns of loops as well as if you move along the horizontal line, it is the series of loops. Okay? So, and these loops are basically connected with each other. So, one loop is connected with top loop and bottom loop and along the series also it is connected with left loop and right loop and the symmetric is all around. So, each loop has almost similar type of appearance left, right, top, bottom. But the interesting thing is, when you try to flip this fabric on the other side, the structure is completely different. So, can you see here, the structure is completely different. So, this is the, uh, this is the front side you can say, maybe it is top side and this is the back side. Okay. Compared to woven fabric, it was very difficult to differentiate both the sides, but in knitted you can easily see these two sides are completely different. Other interesting thing which is uh, practically uh, very important in terms of applications is extensibility. So, if you apply little bit amount of stretch, it can stretch to up to 100 percent or 200 percent very easily depending on the structure. So, you can see a oven which was not stretching at all, but a knitted can be stretched so easily. 
and also we can see the structurally they are different from the top side and bottom side. Also in case of Uven, these two structures on the top side and bottom sides looks almost similar. So, fundamentally from the yarn movement point of view, these two structures are completely different. So, we have just noticed the appearance of Uven fabric is almost same in case of Uven structure, but in knitted you have seen on the top side it looks different, but on the bottom side it also looks different. Thickness because if you see Uven and knitted, especially the thickness of a Uven fabric is much much low compared to a knit where the loops are actually in 3D plane. So, because of that the thickness of a knitted is much much higher compared to Uven structure. Extensibility also we have seen Uven is very limited stretch, but a knit fabric is very high stretch. Tear strength this is also very interesting if you because the fabric is so tight. So, when you try to tear it or you if you try to cut the fabric and if you try to apply force the Uven will just torn out very easily because the structure is very very tight. But in case of knitted it is very very difficult to tear that is why knitted has been used in cut resistance gloves. Permeability we have seen how open a knitted structure is. So, obviously knitted gives you very high breathability compared to Uven. Drape because knitted is very highly flexible conformable, so it can fit to your body contour very very easily compared to a Uven structures. So, fundamentally these two structures are entirely different having different properties that is why these two structures are also recommended in different types of applications. So, let us summarize what we have learned particularly in this lecture. The first one is we learned try to understand what do you mean by knitting. It is nothing but a process of interlooping of the one or more yarns. So, you take the yarn you make loops and these loops are connected together. So, each individual loops are intermeshed at the top by the top loop and bottom loop. So, that it remains in that stable shape. If you take out any of these top and bottom loops, these loops cannot be stable it will just open up. So, fundamentally this is called knitting where you make loops and you connect these loops with each other and Nevering loops helps to secure and stabilize a loop structure. We have also explored different application potential of knitting including hoiseries, cut resistance gloves, sew uppers which is quite new in 21st centuries we are moving towards highly advanced medical technologies where knitting can is playing very important role to integrate sensors and giving you very valuable information regarding your health. It is also being recommended mostly in sports and there are so many other technical applications where we use a knit structure. We also fundamentally try to understand how a Uven and knit is completely different. In summarize Uven is much more rigid stable as well as low extensibility and poor breathability while knitted is very high extensibility very good breathability and very good fitting properties. So, this is how uh, these two structures are different. From the next class especially in next lecture 2 we are further going to understand a structure little bit more. We will also going to learn different interesting terminologies which is being used in knitting because we are starting this course. So, we first should learn about some terms in knitting which I will be using frequently. So, it will help you to understand the subsequent lectures. So, we finish the lecture 1 today and we will move to lecture 2 in the next session. Thank you.